Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In this tutorial we will be looking at some of the tools inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now what do I mean by tools? Now basically I am referring to these tools in here. You can see that we actually have a few tools in here that maybe you didn't know existed, maybe you know exactly what they do, but a lot of them give you quite a bit of extra functionality that you may not have considered. Now for all... Um, most people you can get away with just using the select tool uh, maybe using the position tool every now and then but I'm just going to give you an overview of what each tool does just so that you can choose the tool appropriate to each task um, and please note that all of these letters here are actually keyboard shortcuts so you can just tap one of these keys to take you straight into that tool and the more efficient you get with uh, keyboard shortcuts the more efficient you will get with your editing I can promise that so let's start off with A which is the select tool very much well this is the default tool so I'm sure you're familiar with this I'm not going to go into too much detail but basically if you press S obviously you can scrub through that's the same with each tool but this allows us to move clips really easily around the timeline fly them around but also, uh, we can also access our precision editor really quickly. Now, I do actually have a tutorial on the precision editor, so please check that out. And basically, for adjusting clips, you can obviously adjust each keyframe. And like I said, for the most part, this tool will be sufficient um, for lining up your clips, moving audio around, um, basically just preparing everything. And this is your default edit tool way in which you can perform most of your tasks. If we then move down to the position tool, this allows us to move clips anywhere in the timeline, um, which will perform overwrite commands or um, create gap media. For instance, if I drag it here, you can see that I'm actually dragging on on top of media, and I've just now deleted that media. And this is kind of traditional to how a um, other how most other non-linear editing systems work such as Premiere or Avid and that is like I said the position tool just hit P to access that and say we drag it beyond the end of our timeline you can see we can actually put it anywhere and this has created some gap media which we can shorten with the A to go into the select tool But if we ha just had the select tool selected, you can see we can't actually move it over here. It just it's just gonna whiz it back to the next clip. So for creating gaps, you want to be using the position tool. Our next tool is the trim tool. Now, by the well, it actually has some functionality that is the same as the select tool in that we can drag the end of a clip, like here, drag the length of it. As with the select tool, you can see that we can also drag in the clip, and this performs a rolling edit. Um, now, what do I mean by that? that? Basically, if we zoom in, we can see exactly what we're doing here. In fact, let's look at a smaller clip. Okay. Um, okay, here's a good clip. You can see that we've got an in point, which is me looking angry and an out point which is well actually it's me standing up let's say we grab the center of this clip with our trim tool we can change the in and the out point simultaneously you can see now our end point well our start point and end point has all moved um, well to the right is the simplest way to put it but effectively we are grabbing the clip and dragging it over along. I mean, it's really quite... You, what's great about Final Cut is you can actually see every single frame live. So you can see exactly how you're affecting the clip and the sequence. Um, and that's pretty much the trim tool. Like I said, you can trim the ins and outs, um, as you can do with the select tool. But the rolling edit feature is what you would use the trim tool for for adjusting the in and the out simultaneously in a given direction. Our next tool is the range selection tool. This allows us to draw a range onto our media. 
Why would you want to draw a range? Well, the most common task to draw a range is in fact the time remapping tool. Um, so if we click this button here, you can see that if we now choose uh, slow, fast, normal, or hold, it will only affect the range we've selected. Let's just quickly demo the fast. You can see that that percentage is now fast, and that's shown by a blue icon here. Um, please see the time remapping tutorial for more details on that. And you can just hit escape. Well, actually, you can't on here, but you, you can just click the X to close that down. And it doesn't actually allow you to perform edits it only allows you to perform selections or range selections. The next tool is the blade tool and I've actually got a tutorial on this um, which is called splitting clips and this very simply allows you to click wherever and it slices that media. You can see we've now got two clips that's shown by two names and obviously the line in between them and you can do that with audio, you can do it with anything um, but one thing to bear in mind obviously is that if you're cutting stuff up with keyframes, um, it will retain the keyframes that are beyond the edit point. Um, for instance, if we cut here, you can see that it starts to dip down because there is still an edit point beyond that point. And then the final two are very much navigation tools. The hand tool just allows us to drag um, down the timeline like so and then the zoom tool you click to zoom in you hold alt and um, by the way some of you are confused by what I say when I say alt um, I actually I believe in America you may call it the option key next to your command key and you just hold that and click to zoom out and then let it go and you can zoom back in very simple So that is the brief overview I just wanted to give. I think the main tool, the main thing to bear in mind is learn these key short, keyboard shortcuts and you'll be flying around the software. The trim tool is actually a surprisingly powerful tool. It's quite a common editing tool for most editing software. And I would actually try to use this. I mean, the precision editor is great, but for just altering one clip, uh, nothing will beat this trim tool. Obviously, you don't need to go into the trim tool just to trim the edge frames of a clip. Do use the select tool. The select tool is very powerful. You can perform so many tasks with it. And obviously, you want to fly between the position tool as well for creating gaps. Um, even for managing your timeline, uh, you may be working on one scene, then you may want to fly down and work on another. You want to use the position tool. And um, bear in mind, you can actually use the position tool to grab a clip um, from here you can see we've got the position tool selected and we can grab that clip and because we've got the position tool selected we can create a gap here like that so I hope this was useful um, I know this is more of a basic tutorial um, but I am trying to do a balance of basic and advanced I want to cover as many of the features of Final Cut Pro as I can um, just so that I do have a tutorial for for every need every um, every circumstance that hopefully will be helpful for some people maybe maybe not um, but like I always say suggest a feature in the comments below um, I don't always have time to comment on every comment um, but I am reading your comments that's the main thing to take away I am reading every single one and I will try and make as many of the tutorials as possible I am um, looking into lightsabers um, but at the moment I don't think a realistic lightsaber will be comprehensible at this point however I am looking into it and I will see what I can do and if you don't know what I'm talking about then just don't don't suggest a lightsaber <laughs>